Hello and welcome as today is that of 28th day of June 2018. And in all or at least around 98% of my videos, I always talk about risk reward management and how, of course, all decisions you do is within such. And I like to use both the words because I've heard throughout my entire life people saying, oh, this is risky. Yeah, thank you for, and, and really, yes, thank you. But understand the rewarding parts. And I don't hear people say, oh man, you, you're going to do that? That's very re rewardy. Of course, if they don't use that word and talk about uh, major gains, then yeah, yeah, that's the case. If you go to any of those, well, back in the day, in the 1990s, I remember going to MLM and other type of stuff, and they would try to upsell so much where they simply only talk about the reward, but they don't talk about the risk. So it's very common to talk about one, but not much about the other. Comparing the two and making your decision upon such, I find very important. For example, if you knew that there was a, uh, a, a place where there was random cards, and I really emphasize the word random, and you know there's no cheating, and you could guess what the ranking of the card is, and you're going to get 60 to 1 if correct. You're never going to get this. When you go through the risk and reward and understand your portfolio management and how much you can risk upon such, then it's probably a good decision to play. But I want to talk before getting into the charts about where sometimes having negative returns is positive and having positive returns is negative. For the first example, I'm going to use somebody who has savings of probably at least around two to three thousand minimum and when i say savings i'm talking about your your cash your investments minus short-term debt as well not long-term debt though and if you have such but you're not really rich meaning if you're a millionaire you're barely a millionaire in savings then if you were to play a lottery put five dollars ten dollars down on the lottery Obviously, you know, it's negative ROI. There's uh, nothing else to debate about such. It's true. I mean, sometimes during mathematics, I look back at the day, oh, 649 in Canada. I calculated a little bit, around 14 million and one to win. So when I was like 13 and 12, 14, 15, I knew the days when to buy the 649. That's when the jackpot with $1 tickets back then got to at least 25 million. However, when you look at a situation like this, you know you're barely going to play the lottery and you realize if you lose every single time in your life, you're not going to care because it's not going to hurt you. But if you happen to win, and it's extremely rare, of course, then are you going to uh, be happy about that? Of course, that's extra investing capital. But look at it from another perspective. Now let's assume that you're worth uh, 15 million in savings. Would you risk your entire portfolio to win $20 that you pick six numbers, right? One through 49, and you will not get them all right. Mathematically, you're, you're in good shape. Math being, you can get $20 if you win, but you lose your life savings if you have the uneventual, unlikely, massive unlikely event to take place. So that's one way I look at risk reward management. Now I myself have not bought a lottery ticket, like a 649 in probably over 10, 15 years. I do, however, play sports-based lotteries with, uh, that's a different risk reward management, I'm not gonna get into that, but just uh, a way of looking at it. So we're gonna look at VEN, BNB. One of those go back in time. So I'm gonna do this on the single hour time frame because when I was looking at this in the four minute morning, if you get situations like this, what we've seen up until the start of January, this is magnificent profit, profit. And this goes in line with the type of trading I do. Yesterday, I did a video and I did such using long-term trading and I did it with the code Bitcoin. Starting off and I would do like buy 33, buy 23. I mean sell and buy for massive moves. 
that's not what I do because I play for smaller moves and when doing the video, I don't have time to literally play the one hour time frame on a code like this and be able to do the data not, and get the sub. The only way I would do it, looking back at a code in duration of like say three years on the single hour time frame, is if I could get the data and then I might plug it into a spreadsheet or a, uh, a small basic programming language to get the data that way. But because this is only going back to pretty much late 2017, then this works out fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my first buy at 0.1765. And then from there, I'm going to uh, just keep on moving this in. Now the spreadsheet that I have here, I'm going to have to change it a little bit. And I don't mean because I got to change this, these words for BTC to BNB. We look at the price here. This is all in decimals with basically one number. So I'm going to only be put using the four digit numbers, but it's not based now on eight digits. I have to base it on four digits, which is very easy because on here, if you look at the formulas, which will pop up in here and they're very small, then basically what I do is I, If you look at this, divided by 100 million, because I take the Satoshi price, which I put in here, and I need to do so to get that to point zero 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 one six. So now with having four decimals, I will basically take out the uh, four decimals on each one of these. One, two, three, four. And then we'll just copy and paste this. I would need to do the same thing here as well. One, two, three, four. And there we go. So now B and B, you're gonna need, I'm gonna start with more of them. Let's say you start with 20. And again, in this case, we're gonna be buying at the 1765 Satoshi level. So we'll just hypothetically say, if you bought here, you did nothing, why you didn't profit take, I don't know. Then you'd obviously still be even. So 1765 will be the original buy. What would 100 cost? Two? Uh, you don't want to do at least a third. Okay. Twenty seven, does that make sense? I would guess so it's a pretty decent price. Okay, we'll start with 35. I'm gonna delete all of this now. And we're ready to go. And I was even thinking on the outset that when I was doing this, and with the intro that is, oh, this is gonna be another 30 minute video, but this is to me really good information. I'm gonna use a one hour time frame, and to do this, if you wanna do the same sort of thing, I scroll this to get the maximum amount of data that I can. Oh, this is going to be fun getting some of these moves. But that's the whole point of this. Now, in reality, I will never make any uh, work towards getting to the computer, usually from the hours of about 11 p.m. to about 8 in the morning. I am not on the computer. And then miscellaneous times during the day. That's basically it. If I happen to be home and I'm on the Internet, I'll check several times a day for the orders, obviously, because why not? Doesn't take long to do. And a lot of times you see nothing and there's no need for it.
Now, what I used to do when I first started trading was I would have a laptop on my desk beside my bed. And if I haven't fallen asleep and it's been 15, 20 minutes, I'll literally put my hand on the keyboard, which would take it off sleep mode, refresh my orders, and if I don't have anything, I go back to bed. And if I did, I'd spend about 20, 30 seconds. And back then, I was sickly making like 2 3% moves on mainly the codes of Bella and GNT back then. Okay, so I want to buy it when this thing is moving up to the seven. 1765 mark which would be right here let's start it right here because i want to do it the first time it gets there so we're going to put buy orders sell orders in and all that kind of stuff i'm i going to use the same strategy of now i'm going to do it i'm only going to put one buy order in because that's how i've been playing i'm going to do this how i do this so you can get the idea and I only have one buy order. For most codes, I only have one buy order. Some codes, I'll have three, four, or five, mainly Litecoin and some other ones, very aggressive, XBY, and so on. But, uh, yeah. So now, where do I want to uh, place my buy order? Well, if I'm buying at 17.65, normally on the short term, I'm looking at even 10%, but this is a little more volatile of a beast. So I want to go a little bit better. A 20%, 15% reduction would be about a couple hundred plus basis points. So I'd be looking at probably 1,500. I have no previous data or not much to go by at this time. And even if I don't use technical analysis, if I purely go on the numbers, that's still going to be fine because you're just, again, you're playing the numbers game. So we'll go 15.06. And that just happens to work out where I'd want to have it anyway because I do have enough data for this previous level. A 20% sale would be that of uh, close to 20. So I'm going to put a horizontal ray in here. Maybe I should have put the buy order in last. Okay, so close to 20. 1984. I'm going to put another sell order in. This one has got to be much, much larger than 20%. We're even talking at least 50%. So let's go 29 change. And then I want another one that's really, really high like in here. Now I know I don't have any extreme upticks and I'm never going to hit this. So I'm not going to play this game within such because I yeah, like three sell orders, a near term one, which will be at 20 area, a very good move from that point and an extreme move from that point. There's going to be no extreme hits along the way. The buy order again will be at this previous level. And how much data do I got? I mean, yeah, I mean, this is that's enough data. I mean, this, yeah, 15 is where I mathematically say. So 15 is a conservative level. I have a better chance of hitting 15 as I would hitting 14.3. But it just seems oftentimes these things can go a little deep or a bit further into that key previous area. So we're ready to go. Now, I don't know why this has been doing this for me. But if I move this slowly, we'll get it to work. So let's move the market. And you see right off the bat, 1984 is the sell order. So when you look at the math on how much you want to sell, I'm just going to show you what you don't want to sell. You don't want to, I mean, obviously knowing what happens, you do. But if you sell 20, okay, I have to, I don't have net value on here. If what I mean by that is how much everything you have is worth. So I have to do this uh, mathematically in the sense that 
if you were to go from 1765 to 1984, you gained 200 and uh, plus it works out to uh, like about that 15% mark. So I'm not, I'm only going to want to sell about three to four of these things. Because, and technically speaking, there's a one BNB minimum. So I'm going to go like this instead. I'm going to play with bigger stakes. Start with 100 instead. So now if you have 100, 15%, if I go 10, if I'm selling for 15% gain and only selling 10% of what I have, then that's totally fine. Uh, do, do, do. So let's just even start this with 60 because I like to start off by having a decent amount of buy orders back because as we've seen with these markets, they can go down pretty fast. So therefore, I would be increasing my buy order to here. What I will do is add a second buy order, but I'm gonna wait until I get significant gains. This sell order would get moved because if I'm selling at 20, I'm going to want a 15% gain again. So let's go up about here and then move this up to about say 34. And then the 1551 would get hit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a buy in. So the difference here is pretty good. We noticed that we had, and this is BNB, but we had almost two come in this market. I should change this rake. I really, really should. Because I got point, let's just change the rake to what the rake really is on here. which is 0.05%. Excellent. Okay, so now we ended up uh, getting 1.98 in before. So I wanna buy something that's greater than 10, but less than 1.98. If I were to go say 12, it would cost me 1.86. So that does the trick. We'll move the orders down. So if I'll buy again, we were buying at 15. Let's go a little deeper than that. Let's go say here. I could move this to previous high. That would be a gain of 30%. If I go for, say, 15%, I would need to go up about 18. So if I did that, I would do lower high. But I'm going to, in this case, go about probably here and then bring this to about 29 because that's about a 50% gain from the next sale. And... We can see that the next play would be a buy in at 1342. So with a reduction of over 200 basis points, that's over 10%. I'm going to want to increase my stock by more than 10% as well. My last buy was 12. So maybe I can even do a bit more like say 14. I got 40 of them. So I'm only spending about under two when I had 42 of them. Definitely affordable to do. So that's what will be done. So now I have 116 of these coins in this hypothetical example. So then reduce the buy order. If we go to previous low, and that would take it down to 11. And I can work with that. So 13, 20% uh, gain would be about, uh, well, one third, one thirteenth, that number 13 and double it, that's 26. So that's about 16.3.
but uh, we'll go roughly around this previous high at 17.1 and then go about 24, 25 around here. And it looks like a buy comes in. Just want to verify such. The, I got uh, 11.32, what's the low? Uh, 12, 11.33, ooh. I didn't, doesn't that just fun if you miss by one Satoshi? Because you can, ooh, yeah. But I think, I was gonna say, I think it's gonna hit anyway. But reality, uh, sometimes you don't get your buy. And sometimes you do. Okay, so 17.51 or 17.12 sell. And this is a gain of almost 400 basis points. So therefore, that is an area where I probably want to sell maybe almost what I bought. So maybe 13. And then place new orders in. And the first place I look is previous high, which is in at 28. That's a differential of that of about 320%. I did more before, but let's take this because it's a perfect example. And you know if it's going to break resistance, it's going to break it pretty good. So a good leg lower, higher is another 50% move. My new buy order. Well, where's the key area that I came from that's a good, nice buy? Well, this little area here was resistance uh, earlier in the part. It was again here in a congestion area. What's the differential of gain if I do 15.1? Is it good enough? Going from 17, not really. So I'm going to go deeper below and try at 14.3. And there's a buy because, or a sell rather, because this one clearly goes over the line at 207.3. Now I could even sell more than this, but I'm going to sell what I did the uh, last time and that of 13. So I now have 10 less coins than I did before, but uh, obviously I have a few more BNB at 45 than I originally did after my first buy at 42. Place some new orders in. And I know it's going down, but at the time, if you happen to be there near that level, I would expect a very good break of resistance. Now, I don't really want to play for 50% gains, but... If I were to go around, say, 27, that would be a difference of 7 on 20. That's 35%. So I'm going to increase it a little bit there only because of the theory or the situation of breaking resistance of key level that on that point you can expect a large leg higher oftentimes. But as the market was reducing, probability odds show a buy at 14 is the next play. Wait a second, I would be increasing it. If I bought, if I sold at 20, I would have been buying back at this key level here. Twenty buying back at 17. That's a difference of about 15%. Go lower. If I do 16, that makes it closer to 20. And uh, in a bull market, you would want to do it in this area. And even a bit better than 20 would be nice, maybe 15.4. Maybe not. Oh, love it. Not really. Because you see here, if you, I got a little greedy, if you will. If I would have played conservative, then I would have got the buy down here and an additional sell again. So I missed out on one buy and one sale because I was a little too low in my buy order but a sale order of 20 uh, why do I have a line I should have moved that 20 line yeah but that would have been normally higher sorry about any confusion there so 2668 sale And again, I did about 30%. So if you have 100 units go to 130, that means if you sell over 20, if you sell 20%, they'd be worth more. If you sold 25%, a little less. 
So I'm going to go about 15, even 16 would normally do to fit the bill. I got a nice little sum of four. This is the highest I've gotten on a trade so far. So now after a aggressive buy, I definitely, or sell rather, I definitely want to be looking for an aggressive buyback. This little area here, about 19 is where I want to go. My next sell order will be, again, this is getting very aggressive. I'm looking again to get that 30% number if it's going to keep going, if not 40%. So if it goes up uh, 30%, I would need 7.5 on that number, making it go to 33. So I'm probably going to go around 37 and then place the ultimate one up here for about double, a little better. Okay, so we got the buy that comes in at the uh, 1965. So within the buyback here, we got 4.2. I want to pay less than four and get much more than 16. Can I get 20 and do so? I can. So I'm going to buy 20 and then place new orders in. So when looking at this, I probably put a buy order in around this area here at about 14 and a half. Now as far as sell, now we can go back and talk about this previous high. The move there is about uh, probably the best place to sell. If I go about 25, then the differential in gain for this would be, uh, well, 500. That's pretty good. That's one quarter 25%. Uh, and then maybe somewhere close to double if it gets past that. Does this break resistance? I don't think so. 2531, nope. That's like three now. And then it does a bunch of nothing, continues on. So here we were close on December the 8th from a trade. Now it's December 11th, three days plus without a trade. Four, five days, six days without a trade. It'll happen. It'll happen. There's your sell order at 2557. And I'm probably going to sell at least 16, but less than 20. So 17, 18, or 19. And the reason why is because I want to sell for more than I did before. Now, I'm going to go down back to 16. If it was the same price, I probably would do about 18 at 26.68. But I felt that this was the better number looking at the chart. So that's why I did such. And I like that percentage move. So let's uh, continue on. And we're in a situation technically that if we break this level of resistance, it's going to have a nice gain. So again, you're going to want to have a significant move. If we were to say do 34, the differential on that is about seven. That's close to 30%. So I'm going to do a bit more because of how big of a play that is. So 36, maybe a bit higher under, 35, six. And then somewhere around the 70 number up here, 74 is fine. Buy order. Well, where did we come back from? Roughly around here. And that would be 2147, which is a differential of 400 points, almost 20%. So I'm gonna barely go below it. Of course, the last time I did it, I missed the, missed the buy. Not this time though. So we got a buy at 20.92. And again, we're looking to do the exact same thing. Last time we got 408. That would cost more. So let's go 19. So time to sell that, uh, put that sell order back below previous high. And we can move this closer to 55. New buy order, got to go lower, obviously. This is a key area that's been hit several times. So I would look at the 17 number, think 
that's like over 300 basis points, 15%. That's fine enough for me. And it's definitely an area I'd be looking for support. If, of course, that's where it would go to. Almost did, and then did here. So 17.18. Now, in reality, there's going to be times where several hours do go by. But we'll just hypothetically say you got alerts on your phone and you don't mind waking up. I wouldn't do this, but for this example, we will because it's easier. Now, when it comes down to it, we're getting this buyback here because this sold buyback, sold buyback. In this case, we sold 13 for 2073. Now, I don't mind spending more than the 26 number, but uh, I think I'm just going to repeat what I did before, especially because I can mathematically afford it. Maybe just one more on top of it. It's going to cost 437. Let's uh, continue on. As far as the next buy order is concerned, we're now looking at about this level here that looks like the more reasonable place. That would come in at the 14 handle. And 14 handle is a decent enough drop for me to accept such a deal or offer. Sell order time. Well, now I want to drop it. Area around here, previous level, 22. Is that too large? Yes, it is. So I'm going to want to go to, say, into this previous area. And at 26, now we're talking over 300 points. We're talking about 20%. So we'll do that. And then we'll again do somewhere close to double here. Do I want to do previous resistance? That's only a gain of 30%. So now we'll do 36. And again, I'm going to normally have three orders, but I know it's just not going to happen here. Does this go below 14.4? This one wins. We can see the low, 14.31. So this one we won or got it by 13 basis points. So I'm going to buy maybe 24, but 23 just to make it an even number of 140. And I still got like... 39 of these uh, coins, which is pretty decent. And that's only three less from where I started. So right on plan. Next buy order. And I like this little area here, previous level of support, which means now we're going to need a new sell order. And 18.5, could you sell it now? You almost could. Let's go 18.55. And within such, we're selling at a gain of 411 points. That's under that of 30%. For 140.280 is 20%. That would get you to 17.60. So I'm going to, I want to sell an okay amount of 20% would be 28. I'm doing a little bit less than this. When I get to a situation where I have extreme gains, a lot of twos in a row, then maybe you might want to reevaluate situation and even go for more aggressive sales. But we'll look at that if the situation comes into place. So there is a gain of 3.7 uh, the BNBs, which means that this number is marginally higher than this one. And this number is higher than this one as well. So you're definitely winning at that stage seeing such an event. So therefore, if we were buying at 18, let's just bring this back down to previous low again. Move this up to previous high, maybe. Or below it. 18 to 23, that's five. Yeah, I want to do previous high around there. Maybe a nice little bit below because the high was 279 and I'm going 258. And then let's just move that up to here. And obviously, see, this is a spot where, again, I mean, you don't know. It didn't work out. You got unlucky. If you had it down here, you would have got two sell orders that would have got hit. But for now... We're just going to take this one here. Did I get this? I, I No, I don't think it hit. 
No, that was from before. So I'm going to uh, put a sell order in for 25.85 on the spreadsheet. And we'll sell 20 of them again. Bring us back down to original amount. Bitcoin or BNB at 48. And let's continue on. Doing so by placing a buy order. If I got 25, we'll go 18.8. Of course, you missed out on that sale, so be it. But now that you know that's previous high, Maybe you put it there, maybe a little below it. And then the market moves quite frequently. Now here's a situation where volatility is now settled down a lot. So I'm just going to lower this a bit more because I sold last at 25. I was looking to sell for higher because markets were moving at a faster rate, which obviously isn't the case anymore. So if I sold at 25, I'd want to get at least 33, 34 area. So maybe move it down towards 35 change. And then put this one down just a little bit and keep the buy order as is. And that's where the buy order would hit at 18.88. So I want to buy well less than five, more than 20. 25 does the trick. That means the buy order gets dro dropped. So we'll go about uh, previous low at about 15. Sell order if we bought at 20. If we go back to this previous level of resistance, that'd be about 26 which is where I'm going to go and then brew this down to previous high. And the buy at 15.39 is the play. And if we look at this situation, this isn't the greatest of buybacks overall because we're getting the buyback of 18.55. It's still a differential of over 300 points or 18%. So I'm probably going to end up buying about the same as I did last time. And in this situation, I'm barely paying more than I did before. But overall, throughout the two trades, I'm getting a good deal on such. And now I got 150 of these coins and additional amount of 50. And it's only cost me so far under three of the base currency. Now let's reduce the uh, seller or oh, first buy or need a new buy order. So if we bought 15 here, we got this previous low and at about here, new sell order. I'm looking to come back to a key area, just a decent gain, not much to choose from. I'm gonna pick somewhere around here. So 22, I can do a hair under that too. And then I'll just move this a little bit lower from previous side, but it's still pretty much playing on the same aspect. Let me just take a look at. Okay, so I should have sold the 21, did I? I don't know what I don't know what I did wrong there. I'm going to put two sales in there. I was looking, I paused it for a bit. I'm like, I swore I bought at 15. Anyway, let's just put 21, 2, and 43 in. Twenty one, twenty four, forty thirty one. So in this case, you want to sell less than the 25, so maybe 22. And in this spot here, you've almost doubled. So if you sold about, well, if you double, 
you're going, you want to sell a third to be at the exact same value. Because if you go from, uh, duh, 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 say 100 to 200, that means you would, or even half, but this is where you could say, okay, I want to put a larger sale order in because it's gone up so fast. And your second sell orders are always going to have a number like this because you mathematically realize that you got an extraordinary gain getting close to double. Therefore, if you did such, you can get away with a larger sale, but you need a very large buyback, or at least if you're going to buy back at 30, you only want to buy a small amount. So then, let's put the buy in and this is where I might put a second buy order in now because things are moving in. Let's go 23. Again, I'm going to put a second buy order in. And I'd probably do so down here because if they have any of those types of moves, just magnificent really. Put my first sell order from the 40 again at about there and there. There's the buy, which hits at the 23.45. And because I am buying higher than where my previous sell was, I want to buy less than what I bought from before. If I buy 22, it's a cost of 516. But I want to save some of my great sale from before to get at even cheaper prices or a much, much larger pullback. So then let's reduce the buy. So we're back into here. Say 17. And then for the sales, we have sold at 20, bought at 24. So somewhere around here, previous level and somewhere over 70 right around here. And I can see a buy coming in at 1777. And now I'm going to buy obviously more than I did before. So you could almost say this buyback is for both of these. So I want the accumulation of the two to be well more than 20 or 40 rather. If I go like 26, 5.16 and 4.6 is under 10. So I got over six base currency and eight of these altcoins amongst that trade. Let's remove that sell order down to here. And technically speaking, my buy order below that would be like 0.01. I know it's not gonna hit, but I'm just gonna leave it for that purpose alone. Put a new sell order a bit below. This little key area here, this has got some previous uh, big happenings at the 2575 level. Very, very good gain at this point. So I'm even going to go a little bit lower, maybe 24. And then reduce this just a little bit. Actually, I'll put it at previous high. And the two four four seven hits. So a gain of about eight uh, six hundred. Pretty pretty good. Uh, so twenty four of them, and walk away with uh, almost six BNBs. So increase the buy order to the previous low, and move the sell order. 26 to 34, that's a difference of seven. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, that'll work. But you got the buy that hits at 17.8 instead. But notice what happens here. You buy and it's at 25.54. Let's just take the trade. Because you're in one of those spots where you buy and you see it's right back to where it came from. That's a beautiful, beautiful thing. 
So you're getting the buyback of the previous one. If you go say 28, that's significantly lower there. So you'd sell maybe 25 and get uh, 6.3 back. So now we got 57 of these things, which is close to where we started. And 15 more of these coins that are worth more as well. Really no need to change any of these orders because we just have the sales and buys as is again. And now you're going several days without a trade. We're still only into January. And this is, uh, d d d let's just do this a little fast. Let's just assume here you got both the buys and the sales at the same time, because that's gonna happen to some, you know, sometimes as a trader. Using the example that you went out for town for a bit and you couldn't do it. I know I said that I'd always do an hour by hour basis, but in reality, plays like this will happen. And that's, this has happened to me a couple of occasions in the past too, at least one that I can think of clearly. And we'll put the two transactions in. So how many would, would I've had, how, how big would each of the orders have been? Well, in this case, I would have seen that the market go from 26 to 34. So we're looking at 30% gains. I'd probably sell about 25 again. Not even thinking about the sale order going to hit. If I bought 25 at 25.44, I'd be looking to buy more probably be looking to buy 35. So there's a spot now where that's just a beautiful situation. You just uh, had a nice little gain, if you will, 125 of the coins. But given where the price is, I'd be moving this up a little bit into this little area here. And of course now at the price here, I wanna sell. Do I do previous high? Sure. There's some buys, or one of them anyway, at 2437. And we are getting the buyback from this play here. So if I go, say, 30, that's a good deal. Now, this video now is close to 50 minutes, and it was not fun uploading that longer video or that same duration time before. The fact that this is this long, I'm kind, I am sorry, but this is good information and there's really no other way of me doing this other than trying to find creative ways to even shorten the tape. And I do find this very valuable information. So if I can just help one person out with this, then for me, it's worth doing another part and just going through it on another long video rather than just giving you a summary of how it would have went from this point on. But we are on January 11th. Now what I will do is I'm gonna reduce the time frame to a three hour in part two. And we'll be continuing from this point as far as where the new orders would go. Now I'm gonna go back to previous low here for the new buy order at 17. Put a sell order, we were at 24 before. Let's go up towards here at 33, and now it's definitely got to reduce that a bit to around here. So thank you for tuning in, and I look forward to making part two of this video, but it might be a little while before it's uploaded.